Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of I'm Not Okay Why. This is part two, part two of prejudice and pretense in the Black community. In other words, colorism amongst the Black community. We, you know, we it's still much more ground to cover with this topic. Uh, on Tuesday, you heard uh, part one, and pretty much a woman's perspective is what you heard. Uh, from uh, part one, but today you're going to hear part two, uh, pretty much on a men's perspective. We have uh, Pastor Larry King and Pastor uh, Carlos Calhoun, uh, along with myself, we're going to talk about it and be as transparent as possible because what we want to make clear with this topic is how important it is and how deep it goes. So let me just... Um, take care of a few things you can follow i'm not okay why on the social media platform which is ig and facebook uh we actually are a part of re a really real radio.com each tuesday and thursday from 4 to 5 p.m you can listen to different topics i'm not okay why radio show it's a platform of amazing panelists with different backgrounds and what we do is we talk about the issues that we're not okay with in our community and what we're hoping to do is start the conversation so that there can be a complete wholeness and healing in our community because we avoid you know certain conversations you know, we really do. We avoid certain conversations and we just want to uh, pretend that they don't exist or we want to act like something is really not a part of our culture or we are ashamed of it in some way. We really need to talk about so many different subjects and that's what I'm okay why does. We, 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 we cause you to confront the very thing that you swept under the rug and have avoided and didn't want to talk about. So thank you once again for tuning in to this uh, episode. Listen, we have a show called Reveal and Heal Podcast, which also you can tune into each Monday on Facebook Live at 6 a.m. Motivation Monday. You can follow uh, Relationship Lounge Presents Reveal and Heal Podcast on all major platforms, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Pandora, all of the major outlets you know you can't heal if you won't reveal so see you got different uh you got different podcasts that you can actually uh, be a part of and listen to and hope that you will find something that is said that will help you along the way let's get it popping pastor calhoun sir how are you today hey <clears throat> hey i'm doing awesome today how are you doing coach Dale? Man, listen, I'm always excited to have the opportunity to talk about the very things that that, you know, that are troubling to our community, not to throw shade, not to hurt anybody intentionally, but I'm a part of the community. We are in a process of healing and it's it's a continued process. So we have to talk about these things that are very, very uncomfortable for our community. You know, we are part of the community, so we know in hindsight, what they're saying, you know, in their head, even why, why you want to talk about this? Why you want to stir up, you know, some mess? Why you, why you, why you always, you know, got to bring up stuff that, that we, that people not even, you know, want to be bothered with. It's like, you know, we know the conversation, right? We know those little fusses that they would try to stir up and, and call you messy Bessie about, you know, you know, so listen, let's get it started. I'm excited about it. What tell me first of all? Uh, first of all, when you hear, uh, when you hear uh, prejudice and pretense amongst the black community, what is it that comes to mind? Well, listen. I want to uh, first of all just thank all of those who are listening. Um, listen, I, I just got to let you know that um, Tuesdays are great, but Thursdays are special. Um, okay. <laughs> there's oil. There's an oil. God. God looked at. God looked at Thursday and poured. That's special. That's special. So <laughs> I'm always excited. I'm always excited about Thursday. So I want to. I want to thank all those who are watching. My family, my friends, um, for for tuning in every Tuesday and Thursday at four o'clock. But so we got another great one on uh, on cue today. 
And so we're talking about uh, prejudice and pretense in the black community. And so um, this, this is, this, man, we got to spin this thing around and turn it upside down. So we can Come catch the, the different aspects of this. So, um, so when we hear this, um, and, and I, as, we, as we were getting ready to come on, you, you and I were talking, you, talk, you used a term called colorism. And mm. um, Coach, I've, I've experienced colorism my whole life, um, but never was introduced to the term until recently. Mm. And it's, it's interesting, Coach, Bill, when, um, when you finally can put a name to something, so, so if you go to the doctor and you know you have this symptom and you know you're, or let me say it like this, you know you're experiencing this and you know you're experiencing that, but there's no name to it. Um, sometimes I think, I, I, really, I really believe this, I, I'm, I'm totally convinced that sometimes it's beneficial when we can put a name to an experience. Yeah. I think that's part of the process, right? Part of the process is you go to the doctor, you tell them what you're what you're experiencing, um, and then hopefully, prayerfully, that doctor diagnoses and gives that disorder, that disease, a name. And um, for us as a community, I think part of the process is, is that we've actually put a name to this um, prejudice and this pretense in our community. So. When I, when I think about, when I hear this prejudice and pretense in the black community, I think, I think honestly, that one of the first things that come to mind is, is hatred. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Elaborate, bro. Like I said, we got, we got to turn this thing around. We got to flip it upside down. We got to, we got to really look at this because when we, when we hear and when we see and when we experience, um, people not liking part of themselves when when we see people you, you know it's, it's interesting oftentimes um so so you ever have you ever have a, a parent that really gets frustrated with a particular child they got they got three they got four or five children but it's one particular child that that seems to really just press their buttons and, and just seems to aggravate and irritate them um, oftentimes the child that they are in constant conflict with is the child that's most like them wow that is the truth right there so 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 sometimes um people that are acting out or or um aggravated or or, or infuriated by something it's, also, it's oftentimes the something that they see in themselves, and it's oftentimes the, the something that they see in themselves that they don't like about themselves. That is true. I'm that I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be transparent. That is true. Being a mother of five, being a grandmother of fifteen, you know, when you recognize familiarity, and you recognize something that is a thorn that you have, that has been a challenge for you. You know, it could be attitude, it could be personality, it could be choices or in decisions. It could be likes or dislikes. And that thing that has just been a poker, you know, to you, it's, it's something you wanna avoid as you grow and you become better or you, you grow uh, into a better place. You don't want to recall, you don't want to revisit, you know, you don't want to uh, acknowledge those areas. You hide it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You act like it never happened. And then that doggone thing shows up in a child of yours, a grandchild of yours or someone that you love it looks just like you. And mm -hmm. what you do is you beat yourself up through that person. But that person is one that's feeling it and dealing with it and it's going to impact, not knowing that what you're doing is beating up on yourself. Wow. 
so that's so, exactly. so yeah so so let's go we're going we're going out there but we're going to bring it back in we, okay we're going, we're going to go out there but let's bring it back in okay. so i got to stop you, you you gave some information so i got to interact with information so you said the mother of five grandmother 15 um pastor you was doing something besides praising the lord now look I, I, yeah uh -huh. <laughs> five and 15 you, it wasn't all bible study <laughs> uh, all right all right uh -huh. I had two husbands, <laughs> and I was being a wife. Where <laughs> my God to be? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. Yeah. So, so now it's interesting, right? So we we when we hear prejudice, or mm -hmm. I, I'll for others, I'll speak for myself. When we hear prejudice, we oftentimes the first image that comes to mind. Of course, is is our experience is is right. the, the African American, the Negro, the Black man, the yeah. the experience of us, um, and, and and of course we see we see the sixties and we see uh, you know Jim Crow and we see white only water fountains and we see uh, covered only balconies, um, mm -hmm. but but what happens when that same mentality and that same mindset is then self applied? to our own people. Man, it's on 1,000. It's on 1,000%. Yeah. What, because what of what I just stated, though. Pardon me for you know interrupting you, but no. recall what I just stated, the reason for it. Right. It's, it's because of what I, what I just said applies to right. the, the, how we look at each other as a community. Right. So it's 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 so, like I said, we're 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 thirty thousand feet. We're jumping out the plane, and we're nowhere near the ground yet. But but mm -hmm. as, we, as we're jumping out the plane at thirty thousand feet, um. So yeah, you're absolutely right. What you said is correct. You know, it's it's when when we hear those statements, those statements are, it's 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 when I said hatred, it's self hatred. Wow, how can I? Go. How can I love you if I don't love me? There you go. You know, now, when you, the, now you're talking. When the Bible says to love thy neighbor as thyself, well, that's 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 that's, that's implying that you first love yourself. And so sometimes the issue is how can I love you if I don't love me? So so now we 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 hear these things. So coach Deb, so when I was growing up, um, I'm 46 years old, so you, you know, born in 75. So you 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 do your math and figure out the era and dispensation that I grew up in. When I grew up in, uh, when I grew up, I, I I remember hearing the things like so you know in history class when um, the time would come to talk about Africa um, because of not history but his story, um, yeah. his story of Africa that was, was nothing. To and so probably the mindset was, uh, I'm going to have to hit somebody before this is over, literally, yeah. um, because some white person was going to say, you know, African booty scratcher. Uh -huh. But see, that, that wasn't the problem. The problem wasn't the, the white person saying the African booty scratcher. That's problematic within itself. But the real problem was the black person saying African booty scratcher. It was the black person. Let's let's flash forward. So, um, like Dexter, um, I spent um, years in the Cartersville school system as a mentor, and so we're talking, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago. We'll say ten years ago, matter of fact, because I, I have some dates in mind. Ten years ago, I go into the Cartersville uh, school system mentor, and I hear the same term. Now we're talking about. 20 plus years different. The textbooks have even gotten somewhat better. And, and I'm still sitting in the cafeteria with two young black men and I hear the term African booty scratcher. What, you know, what, how, how did we, how are we, how are we still here? How do we not know um, 
beyond his story? Why don't we know history? Why don't we know about Timbuktu? Why don't we know about that, that much of this Bible that we read and understand today was written by people of color, that the, the, the characters in the Bible were people of color, that um, the great uh, Bible scholars, Augustine, that we study in seminaries or African of the same, Augustine of Hippo, and why do we not know this? Why are we still walking around with this his story version of Africa and what it means to be a man or a woman of color? Why is it that we're still so confined and complex by who we are and what we are and our history and how we were created? Um, and and so you know that that, that alone, this this African booty scratcher mentality um, is is problematic and plaguing to this day, our community. Well, um, if you'll allow me to interject, uh, you know, it's conditioned thinking. My, pers that's, my opinion is that it's conditioned thinking. And for the listeners, for those that are listening today, we don't have our, our doctors or our uh, therapists on this uh, today. So we're gonna give you transparency. We're gonna give you, uh, you know, our own perspectives. We're gonna give you our own stories and our own understanding and hope that what we share is something that you also, you also share. Welcome, uh, Pastor Larry. The conditioned thinking, in my opinion, uh, Pastor Calhoun, uh, it's, something I believe is where we are because even when we started learning about us as inventors and us as uh, creators and, you know, artistic, you know, people, geniuses and, you know, uh, uh, being a part of history, we didn't want to believe it. We didn't want to believe it. Man, we, even when it came to the Bible, you know, and our role, we didn't want to believe that. It was, we're accused of being brainwashed and all this kind of stuff. You know, it's a rebellious, rogue, and all of that. Our lack of knowledge when it comes to our own history is pitiful because the names that we call each other amongst our own community, a lot of this stuff, we don't even have a clue as to the name of it. Many times I heard, heard things like Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom, even to this day, I hear our community call, you know, uh, individuals, Uncle Tom, if they recognize a, 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 a Black person, you know, being uh, humble in some kind of way or falling behind a white person like they're kissing up on them, when Uncle Tom actually was a dude that would not submit to the ways of the white man. He would not beat his uh, uh, Black uh, sisters and brothers he would not he was rebellious he was rebellious against the demands of the slave master that's correct now coon is you know that's a different story so, but see these names though it didn't come from our white counterparts these came from our community and because these names exist we have formed a certain attitude or dislike for ourselves. We look at one another with bitterness and hatred and disdain. But, psycho but, but psychologically, it's that individual that's looking at themselves. That's my perspective. I'm not a doctor. But I'm talking. I'm speaking on a level of the, the scenario I shared with you earlier. How um, the familiarity of noticing something that has been a thorn in your side, and something that has been a burden to you, something or weakness that you have that you dealt with, a fault, or you know, uh, a, a, or a, a place in your life where you didn't like a, a direction you were going, a choice that you made or whatever, and you notice that in your children, grandchildren, or people that you love, you want to distance yourself from it. And the way to do it is to abuse the, uh, is to abuse the child in some way. We found ourselves doing that, calling them names and whatever you hate about yourself. If you don't like your color, you black so-and-so. I mean, I heard all of that. 
you big nose, you know, it's like you hear all that in the community. It didn't come out of my household, but I heard it in the neighborhood. I heard it amongst the village. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So that doesn't sound like a love for the people. So I want to bring Larry in right now. Larry, what is your perspective, sir, when it comes to the name calling in the, com in the community of, of, of the Black people? Well, I can tell you from being of a dark-skinned nature, I've heard all the Black monkey, tar baby, Black jelly bean baby, but I don't. I think a lot of times we look at it as poking fun or, you know, jugging at one another. But it becomes detrimental, especially when you already have to deal with it psychologically by yourself. Uh, so then, when you have other people, you know, for me being of a dark skinned nature, a lot of times I was down on myself because I was black. I, everything I looked at, it was looked at negatively, but. <laughs> We have to stop doing these things and start loving. You know, I've never heard a white person say, oh, I don't like you because you're tan. Oh, ooh, your nose is real small. Oh, look at your little lips. They don't do that, uh, that, that I've heard. You know, you will hear us in our community, you know, we'll degrade each other because somebody oh, got good that? hair. Or we'll degrade somebody because they had neck. Or we'll degrade somebody because they got wide nose, thick lips. But what we have to understand is this is how God made us. And if that's how God made us, as we were talking about on the other episode, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And we have to start having more affirmation about ourselves as people. Because <clears throat> I'm reminded of the Willie Lynch syndrome. Okay. And, and, and if you really look, read that and you look at it, it, it's being perpetrated even to this day. He said, you separate, he said, you get the old against the young, the light against the dark, the, 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 the blue eyes against the brown eyes, the, you know, the big lips. I mean, so it has been set in motion. And he said, if you can get them to believe this, he said they would do this for 300 years up to a thousand years and it will become self-sustaining. Well, it has become self-sustaining. But I take it even a step further. If you look at TV, if you look at music, they do it, rap music, they do it also. Because in most of your videos, you may, you have, if you got 20 females, you have all them light skin, but you had that dark girl, and the only reason why she there, because she got a big old butt. You know, so it's almost like you're being used for attribute that uh, somebody else don't have that's of a different hue. Um, so we have to be careful how we talk to each other. We have to be careful how we treat each other because words are powerful. Whoever made that analogy, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words or whatever it is, words never hear me. That's a lie from the fist of hell. Indeed. Uh, because words have power. You know, you tell a person, and just like me, uh, you tell a person that you're black and ugly your whole life, eventually you're going to start believing it. You, you're going to believe it. And what happens is you start believing that and then you start living out what you believe. So if I feel like I'm ugly, guess what I do? I start acting ugly. I'm loud, I'm obnoxious. I'm obnoxious. So we have to be careful how we talk because I, I really truly believe that words have power. Pastor Calhoun, sir, what, are you, uh, what is your perspective on black equal, equal and ugly? and black equal and evil, but white equal and right and, and equal and pure. Well, so, so it, it's, it's foolishness at its best, but, but let's, let's not just take the easy way out. So th there's, there's, th there is a, there was something that was misused in his concept. So when we talk about darkness and light in a general idea, you know, th there is a connotation of dark as darkness, not dark skin. My skin 
It's not my sin. Mm. So, so there's this idea of darkness and the darkness has a negative connotation. Uh, but our, our dark skin is not darkness. So that, that's, that's somebody taking a idea and abusing it or using it for their own advancement. And so um, that's what, what, what Larry, that's what, what Larry's talking about. That's, that's the reality. So that's the reality. When we, so when we take someone of, 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 of any pig, um, they don't, they don't see representations of themselves on television. They don't see representations of themselves in magazines. They don't see representations of themselves um, in toys. And so, um, you know, even, even at wonderful homes where affirmation is given, um, that child still has to wrestle with this idea that in a society where everything that's seen as black is negative, but everything that's seen as white is positive. So that that child has to wrestle with the idea that 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 black men are criminals. Uh, they they can know better. They can have a pastor. They can have a father in the home. They can have good representation. But there's still this 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 um, overt message being sent to them that when it's a black man. And, and, you know, I grew up with the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, mm. but, but, but in our society, the blacker you are, the more of a threat you are. So if he's, if he's, I'll be sure, then you might be all right. But if he's Wesley Snipe, you gotta lock your door. Um, and so rather it's, it's voiced and it is voiced. Let's be clear, it is voiced but rather it's actually voiced or if it's subliminal, um, it's being perpetrated, it's being pushed that the darker they are, the blacker they are, the stronger they are. Um, and so then we end up in our society with the, with the brown paper bag text. Right. You know, uh, you know those who are of a fair complexion, or listeners, I myself like, like, uh, I'm dark skin. Um, right. And so we we experience this thing where if you're darker than the paper bag, are you too dark? Um, we grew up in time where there were skin bleachings and, and and people, and even today you hear people of African American uh, descent saying, "Oh, you know, I don't want to go out in that sun. I don't want to go out in that sun. I don't want to get blacker." Well, well, what is that really saying about you? Uh, not to get me wrong, there's just many reasons not to go out in the sun. It's hot. Many reasons not to go out in the sun, it, it can cause skin cancer. African Americans can get skin cancer. But to worry about your pigment getting darker, because to me, to me, uh, I love to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, to me, when you say that, you're it, that's that that's that small note. People say, Well, I, I didn't mean anything by that, but you saying that I don't want to be out in the sun too long because I don't want to get blacker because I want to do everything I can to look lighter to be wider. Wow. That, that, that Pastor Calhoun, that is so true. But while, while you was talking, um, and it's funny that we're talking about this today, I went to eat with my sister and my niece came in. And we seen this lady, this Caucasian lady, who looked like she had Botox in her lip. And my niece said something, and she didn't even know anything about this show. She said, She's paying for what I already have. White people pay millions of dollars a year, a year to be darker tanned or to have bigger lips. And we get it naturally, but we look at it negatively. Because, yeah. psychologically, because psychologically, we think something is wrong with it. But they are actually paying money, hundreds and thousands of dollars to have lip implants and different things, but implants. And it comes naturally for us. <clears throat> so I, I, I've seen Pastor Calhoun, me and Pastor Calhoun probably about the same color. I think he might have me beat a little bit, but we about the same color. But the, the, you would be amazed at the people subconsciously love black men, dark skinned guys, but they'll never come to you and say, 
you know, I love black dark skinned men, but I always tell people this. When I grew up, and I'll just be honest with you, I couldn't stand Al B. Sure. I couldn't stand Christopher Williams. I couldn't stand none of these light skinned guys. I couldn't stand them because I already knew that's what the women want. But when I tell you I thank God for New Jack City, when New Jack City came out and Wesley Snipes was the man, that's when we started getting a little more looks, <laughs> a little more looks at since that happened. But I just found it ironic, like I said, that what we have naturally, uh, our counterparts, they, they pay to have. Wow. <laughs> I remember the talk. I remember when uh, New Jack City came in on the scene. It was major. Uh, Carlos, tell me, do you believe that, you know, you stated earlier that shame was a factor, right? So do you believe that the pretense of, uh, of you know, our community wanting to be something that we're not wanting to use in the, the, the fake creams and wearing the weave and, you know, uh, getting rid of, you know, certain body parts, you know, making it smaller or starving themselves to death on certain diets and different things like that. Do you believe that uh, that not only shame, but fear and, and hatred, all three, shame, hatred, and fear, do you believe that that plays a role in um, not wanting to accept or being a leader in being abusive to the community. So, so, so let me say this. Um, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go abstract, and then I'll try to come back. Okay. So, so I don't have a problem with weed. But let me let me say that. No, I don't either. I'm just saying that you know it is. It, uh, uh, let's just be transparent about it. There uh, are many women that prefer the straighter look because they hate their hair. And then there are actually some men that prefer the straighter look versus the natural. So I'm, what I'm doing, because we represent the community, each voice, I'm actually putting it out there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I wasn't suggesting that you, that that's what you were applying. I, I, was, okay. I was just saying, I was okay. saying the fact. And, and let me tell you where I was going with the fact, because I'm about to get my conk back. Larry about to get some finger wet. Anyway, no, why I was saying that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Are you ready for it, Larry? <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was coming back. Larry. <laughs> but listen, I knew no. It. I knew it. Me, it. I knew it. No, now, here's my real point. Y'all, they're learning me. Y'all know me. I like to have a good time. No, no, but here's my real point. Because I believe, and it's not just what I believe. It's scientifically proven that that the first man was was the African, was the black man. Um, so you know they they got some twisted stuff. They they, they how they come about that, but but science agrees that the cradle civilization is Africa. That the first man was a black man was an African, and so with that thing, that I believe that in our DNA is every variation. So you have black people which that you can have a black person with straight hair. You can have a black person with green eyes. You That's can have right. all these different variations because all of that comes from us. So your point is correct, Coach Deb, is the fact is it's not to not to wear it's nothing wrong with wearing weed. The problem is wearing the weed because you hate yourself. So if I wear the weed and then I look at you and say you look unkept because you wear natural, that's where the problem comes in. All right. <laughs> So the problem's not whether you want to fry it, dye it, or lay it to the side. It is the problem is is that you understand that that does not define you, and certainly someone who chooses another path is not less than you. Um. So so that's why I bring that up about the weave or about or whatever you want to do. Um. If 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 you are if you are if your body shape is healthy, if you can. Um, do your do your thing and you're not out of breath and all that, then be you. Don't don't try to be somebody else. And that's what you were going talking about. Um, some people just doing things that are just unhealthy, trying to make um, probably uh, unrealistic goals, trying to identify with yes. this that's been perpetuated by people that can't even keep the standard. You're trying to look like somebody who has lipo injections. Right. Um, 
dietitian and, and all sorts of personal trainers and they still can't maintain it. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying and I agree. I, I think that, um, that, that it is a, uh, a, a not understanding self, a not loving self, a not embracing self. Um, again, we have so much, so much to be proud of, um, that, 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 that it, it amazes me, but, you know, it goes back to what brother Larry was, was sharing. Um, that's the great, the great, the great uh, lie, the great mis misinformation is to tell someone who is wonderful, who is powerful, who was created in God's image as others, wow. were, but to tell them that they're less than. While the whole time you're trying to be them, the whole time you're trying to wear cornrows, the whole time you're trying to get dreadlocks, the whole time you're trying to get your skin darker, your butt bigger, your lips thicker. You know, you're trying to be that. Meanwhile, you tell them, so we got two scenarios. We got one person who is, but who has been bamboozled and has been uh, confused into thinking that what they have is not wanted. And you got another person who does not have it, who desires it, who, who covets it, and who's con you know, constantly trying to mimic and make it happen. Exactly. Oh, man. So what is, in your opinion, Larry, what do you believe is the reason why we pretend? That we pretend about what? That we, that we, that we, we pretend, pretend to be anything and everything but our authentic self. Because because for years it's been perpetrated like um like Pastor Calhoun was saying. When you if you go to the dictionary and you read the word black, smutty, nasty, evil, thief. So when you read that, you know, um, of course we didn't make the we didn't make black, but if you notice, you can't have no other color if there's no black, but they won't tell you that. But that's another story for another day. <clears throat> and then you go look at white, holy. Godly. So you start feeling that way. Then when people, when your own people start telling you, then you start thinking like that. Because I can be honest with you, with y'all, like, like half of my family is light skin, and the other half is dark. And we just happen to fall on the dark skin part. And you can see the difference. You, you, can, you can see the difference when we talking and how we, you know, how they talk to us and even deal with us. Uh, I, could, I could fuss and be at the same volume as my cousins but they'll say I'm talking loud. So when you have you have the, the white people, then you have the school, then you have home, then you have you know, then you have church, and it seems like there's there's no hope. So my opinion is, is that once we realize, and I think we've come with great strides, I give you an example. My daughter, she had dread, she have dreads, and she's in the Navy. So the military, and I didn't know this until I read it, the military has started adopting natural hair because black, black women was getting frustrated because, you know, they couldn't wear, their hair, their hair sits higher than white people hair. So even though this white lady has her hair in a bun, it's not as high as the black woman because her hair is coarse. So they did this, this, this um, uh, 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 interview and all these analysis and found out, you know, this is true. So now they get to wear dreadlocks. But they, but a lot of people are still not accepted to the black, the black culture. If you notice, everybody get to do their culture with their hair, with their language, with uh, their dress, except black people. Except us. Except us. So I work at Enterprise, I, I work at Enterprise in my second job, and this made national news. And the guy that actually was talking to him, he actually came to where we was at. Well, and it's a black guy. So a black guy came in for an interview and he had dreads. He told the man, you know, you got to cut your dreads. And he was like, why? He was like, because, you know, this is corporate. So when you have those things like that, you know, it kind of deflates you because nothing did he say anything about his education. Nothing did he say about his qualification. The first thing he went to was his hair. So we, as Pastor Calhoun said, there are stigmas on us the moment we walk through the door. I don't know about Pastor Calhoun, but um, I mean, even now, I'm six foot tall, 245 pounds in the gym. You know, I start walking down the aisle at Walmart, 
you know, I see people sometimes go in reverse and they don't understand I'm a pastor. I'm, I, you know, I'm nice. I don't, but they don't know that. They just go by the image that they see. So we have to change the image of the color black. And, and what we have to do is we have to, while they show us negatively in a black way, we need to show them the positive of black. We need to let them understand, as you said at the beginning of the program, that we have to start letting them know how smart we are. We invented the air conditioner. We invented the street light. Washington, D.C. was made by a black man. We have to understand that, uh, 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 um, you know, all your hair products come from black people. So when we start having pride in ourselves, that's the main thing. And we, and I hate to say it, and I don't, I don't care, if we can get these rappers from stop being the role models, these, 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 these basketball players and football players stop being the role models for our kids, and we as black men and black women start being a role model, we, 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 can, get our, we can get our communities back. I remember when I was growing up, every black boy wanted to be his daddy. I don't care if he was a trash man, a trash collector. You knew dad worked, dad brought stuff home. He had a role model. Well, when the black man, when when the black man was removed out of the black home, then there's no role models. So we have to get that back. We have to get that reassurance back. And the, and the black men being in a place we carry the reassurance and then we can get our blackness back. That is very true. You touched on some real pivotal stuff. Uh, Calhoun, do you believe education is a very important role in the black community? Not just education, but you know, uh, uh, knowledge about who we are. You know, do you believe that will change? I know I'm asking a couple of questions. Do you change? The, do you believe that that would change the whole dynamic about how we look at ourselves if we knew that we mattered? If we really believed and knew that we mattered by knowing about ourselves? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So education is the key, and that's not just for for us. That's that's the key for the whole. Um, that's that's the key for the whole question. Um, education is the key. So the you know prejudice from internal or external is based yeah. on it's based on fear and ignorance. Right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, so education education is the key 100 percent. Um, I believe it so much so that um, I, I began writing a, a, a children's book, a series of children's books um, that, that deal with understanding self. Understanding um, self, I like it. So hopefully yeah, that will get done, completed soon. It's been, it's been in the works for a while. Since that experience at Cartersville Elementary School many years ago. Um, so it deals with that and it also highlights, in each book it would highlight um, a factoid about Africa, and, and it's it is spe it's specifically designed for people of color to help them understand and and children because you know Brother Larry would tell us we gotta we gotta catch them while again we can't wait That's it. twenty years old we gotta address these think issues while they're young so um, that book is coming soon um, self selfless plug right there um, but but I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a separatist I'm not a separatist I don't think I, you know, there, there's some scholars out there that think we need to pull away from society. I don't think we need to pull away from society completely. I do think that there are times that we need to pull away so that we can educate, so that we can affirm, um, so that we can um, just, just and, and other cultures do that. Now, um, if, if we pull away, uh, you know, there, there are some people that bought some land in Georgia and they're talking about making a, a, black, a black city. Um, and, and and people have a lot to say about that. Um, the rapper Young Thug, um, he's bought some land. He's talking about making a black community, uh, and people have a lot to say about that. I'm not necessarily about pulling away permanently, but I do think there are times that we need to pull our people aside and just deal with us. Um, so you know, we we're here in the Cartersville community, and um, the last few years. For many years, we've been we've been celebrating the Juneteenth celebration, but the, for the last couple of years, it's been on steroids, and it's just been a beautiful thing. If you know, for those who are who are listening, if you ever get a chance, or maybe your community has it, or maybe you can come to the Cartersville community. But it's just blackness. It's 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 twist. It's um, shea butter. 
it's um it's it's dreadlock, it's uh it's eyelash, it's it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Um and, and, and I watch it's black entrepreneurship. Um and I watch my children as they walk through um this strip in Cartersville in the Summer Hill community, and I watch how their eyes lit up as they saw people they knew and people they didn't know and our food, our fried fish and our fried chicken and and our blackness. And I think sometimes I think sometimes we need to do that. We need to, if you will, baptize our children in blackness and let them yeah. see all of its wonderfulness. Um, sometimes yeah. take a trip, you know, to Atlanta and let them experience the culture. You know, I talk to so many people that talk about Atlanta like it's this horrible place because the news portrays it. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot going on in Atlanta, but there's a lot going on around this world. Um, but sometimes we need to take our kids there. We need to take them to um, South Carolina and let them experience the Ge Geechee culture. We need to take them to uh, you know, the coast of, of Georgia and let them experience those uh, Sapelo Island. Uh, we need to you know, and let our people experience the blackness, you know, let them smell the hot condom on the stove, you know, let them, let them see the fish frying and, you know, the grits cooking. So uh, I think, yeah, education, but it, not necessarily, don't be wrong, not, there is a need for formal education, but sometimes uh, the informal education, that, that information you experience sitting on the front porch with grandma while you're shelling peas, and you get to understand the history and the culture of a people. You know something, you said a mouthful and I'm delighted that you stated it. And Larry, I'm gonna let you piggyback off of him, but first I want to say, cause, uh, yeah, I, know cause you're ready. I know you're ready. I just wanna, I, I just wanna say, I remember so well you know, I, rem that, uh, I remember the phrase black is beautiful, uh, beautiful growing up as a child. I also remember the song by James Brown, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And I remember, you know, there were a, there were a few out there, like the Black Panther type of uh, uh, mentality. They were like heroic about it. They were bold about it. And then there were many, many others that were, aff that were afraid to sing that song. They were afraid to associate themselves with the movement of people showing that they were proud to be black and that black was beautiful and to be saturated in the blackness, wearing their fro's and the pick up in there in the fro and wearing the bell bottoms and looking and loving soul train. And it's like there were so many in the community that got wasted and lost because of fear because of fear, they totally disassociated themselves with the movement of, you know, the right to vote and things like that, because all that was new in the seventies. It was still fresh and new in the seventies. I was a scared little girl in school in the seventies because it was still so close to all the, to, to the cross burnings, you know, and, and, and the, just the hatredness and the meanness and, this, and, and uh, also, you know, segregation. That was all still fresh and new. We definitely got to get where you just stated, bro. Oh, my God. The richness and the colorism, the colorfulness of being Black. It is so many shades of, of Black. It, I mean, when, um, and when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, our artistry, you know what I'm saying? Foods, desserts, and our giftings and things of such. Bruh, we gotta get back. But guess what? There's still that, there's still that cloud. There's still that cloud of uncertainty. Go ahead and go ahead and share, Larry. I'm gonna make it real quick. Um, I agree with Pastor uh, Calhoun, but then I have to disagree too. And I'm, I go, I agree with everything he said, but my disagreement is <clears throat> it's okay if they come and taste our cornbread. It's okay if they come and taste our fish because they took pretty much everything that we cook anyway from us now and mass market. They didn't know anything about chitlins, but we don't make chitlins, but that's another story. I feel, I don't feel like we should separate, but we should separate. And the reason being, because like right now they have this big critical race theory thing going on. And basically if you really read it, they have taken that out of context. I haven't read all of it, but I'm about ready to finish. And basically all it's doing is telling you the evils 
um, of what we call the evils of what white people have done. And they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear, you know, that, <clears throat> that Andrew Jackson raped a woman and he got 24 kids. They don't want to hear that they great the great uh, uh, Washington uh, owned uh, men as slaves. See, they don't want to hear that because now they have to talk about it. The evil of America is slavery. And I think what ticks me off the most is that white people love our culture, but they don't want to yes. be us. They okay. don't want to be us. They, they'll come to Juneteenth. They'll do all that. They'll dance to, to the Commodore. They'll do it all that. But the real proof is when we're standing out there. Now, I ain't talking about Black Lives Matter. When we're standing out there and we and you have, a, you have the ability to change laws for the justice system, and you don't. So I don't care if you never come to a Juneteenth, but I need you as a policeman, when you pull a young black man over, don't automatically think he's a criminal. See, mm. they, they, they don't mind doing that, but they never want you to hear the truth. You, you would never hear a black, or you would, ne you would hardly never hear a white pastor say that Moses had a black wife. You won't ever hear that. Now they'll tell you about Simeon, who carried the cross up there because that's a servitude position. They would never tell you that Jesus was not white. See, my thing is, if you really, if you really want to be a part of us, be us. There was this lady, I cannot think of her name, it's an older white lady. She had a room full of white people, and she asked them a question. She said, who in here would trade places with a black person today? Not nobody raised their hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was at least 70 people in there. No white person raised their hand because you know why? Because they know how black people are being treated. I believe we should, and, and, and people are going to be mad at me when I say this, but I believe we should have separate schools. Same curriculum, separate schools. Because white women or white men don't know how our kids react. They don't know how our kids do. Little Billy is different than Lerone or Leroy. So you, th there's a difference in us. And, and I have to know you in order to know different. I'm going to tell you this. I learned this. We think diversity is because I got a black person on the board. That's not diversity. A blue Chevy Impala and a red Chevy Impala is not diversity. They're made on the same assembly line, but the difference is they just difference of color. Diversity is a blue Chevy Impala and a black Mercedes Benz. They both carry their own. So if I'm black, and I'm sitting on the board, but I have no power. It ain't no use to me being there. Well, it's, I mean, there's no use. So don't, don't, don't put me on your board as the token, as we say, nigga. Don't put me on there if I have no power. So once again, they don't mind. Okay. So here's the good. Now, if they really, if they really truly, if we really truly want to see change, educational, teach Black history all year long. Don't teach it the shortest month of the year. Don't mm. teach it. Teach it all year long. Let the little white kids know what slave. Do you not know that California just passed a law that they can't even talk about slavery? They can't even teach it. Is it I think it's California. Is it California or Florida? They can't even teach it. Now, wh what kind of injustice would that do for the little white kids that don't know nothing about? Not, and this is not too long ago. This is in the 60s. That they was hanging. Do you do y'all not know hanging didn't really start until after we got free? That's when hanging started. And you would get a group of white people on a Sunday morning, they would make a picnic out of it and hang a black person. But see, they don't want you to talk about that in school because they want you to think that slavery is okay. There's a black woman that's suing a book right now, Hewitt Book or whoever. And you know the reason why they say they she's suing them? Because her daughter brought the book home. And the book says these exact words. Black people migrated over here. We ain't never migrate over here. We were brought over here. We didn't migrate. We were stolen. You see how they want to comfort? So I do, I believe we, we need to be separate but equal. We need to teach out of the same book. So if we got to learn about, if we got to learn about Ulysses Grant, if we got to learn about your Confederate people, then you need to learn about Nat Turner. You need to learn about Harriet Tubman. You need to learn about George Washington Carver. You need to worry about uh, 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 Fannie Mae. You need to worry about, I mean, Fannie Mae. You need to, 
let your kids learn our history. So then they have a they have a better thing. They have a better look at it. But I agree with you, Pastor. When you say if they don't do it, we have to teach our kids because the Mexicans they teach their heritage to their kids to the point to where the school has has adapted to them coming over. They pay teachers twice as much. A bilingual teacher get paid almost twice as much as a regular speaker because you know why? They're going to keep their heritage. They're not going to change who they are. They're not going to deal with the crap that other people give them. I'm going I'm to leave this. I'm going to share this and I'm going to leave you with this. Tell me how many Mexicans, Chinese, Vietnamese people do you see vote? And I'm going to leave it at that. Because you know why they don't vote? They vote economically. And until we economically come together, it matters. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to vote to the day I die because my people died for it. But economically is your vote. Economically is your vote. So we as black people, we, if they if they want to, if, if we're going to be a part, let's be a part. Because white people still believe, you know, we're we not going to get, we're not going to be together down here. But when we all get to heaven, well, no, the Bible says what's done on earth is the same as it is in heaven. So, yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that. You listen, well, man. Okay, that that was a whole lot of information, and it was necessary. Thank you. Now, Carlos, I want you to touch on, based off the information that Larry shared, how how great how great is it our responsibility to be the ones to teach our children who they are and teach them how important it is to love themselves and to uh, expose the hypocrisy in our community. Because I believe the, I believe the very, the depth, the very depth of us suppressing how we really feel and what we truly desire from our community is still rooted in fear. It's still rooted in the feelings of not being not being accepted or being popular. I must agree with Larry when it comes to us doing our own thing, but yet not being separated. But we must, you know, take matters into our own hands and forge, you know, a union because I believe that's where we're going to come to a place of true love for our blackness because we're not being forceful. We're not being forceful about, don't you know who you are? Don't you know you are black and beautiful? Don't you know your ancestors, this, 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 this? Sir, please share. Yeah, just, just a point of clarity, when I was talking about submersion and baptism or submersion and blackness, I wasn't talking about our white counterparts. I was talking about our babies. I was talking about our children, that they're the ones who need to experience the Juneteenth, that they're the ones that need to experience the Geechee culture, that they're the ones- Noted, that... noted, yeah. Um, so, so that was both, both part, our white counterparts need education, but um, we were talking specifically about our our seed. And so I was saying that our seed needs to see those moments and experience those moments. Amen. Um, so so to, to your question, um, Coach Deb, uh, this has been a wonderful conversation. And I appreciate my brother so much and his enthusiasm, his passion, and, and his point of view and perspective. Um, but I think, you know, about, the, you know, there, there's this this I'm a preacher, so there's this this sermon that 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 shouts at us, um, our blackness, and and I think that's needed, but also I think that there's this um this experience, and again, let me clear I'm talking about to our white counterparts. I'm talking about internal, not external. I'm talking about internal. Yes. I think I think there's this experience. Um, I think there's this rhythm. There's this 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 cadence. There's this 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 feeling, this emotion, this, I think that is more attractive. Um, you know, people are attracted to our, 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 
our talk, people are attracted to our music, our, our dance, our, I think what we have is very attractive. I think sometimes um, we're, we're dealing with multiple generational um, misinformation and miscommunication. I think oh. simply just being who we are, loving ourselves for who we are. Again, loving, you know, loving the sister with cornrows, loving the brother with dreads, loving the, you know, the brother shouts, the, the fellas with the ball heads, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just, just all of our different um, uh, styles and, 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 and not looking funny at somebody because, you know, their style is different than your style or, you know, their talk is different than your talk. Um, I think, you know, the, the thing that, one of the things this was asked earlier, um, one of the things that, that's so um, difficult about being us is that we, we are so versatile. Um, so there, there's not just one way of us. We are very, I mean, we are so different. Um, you know, we, we've had to adapt. We are, we, we are, we are an adaptation. We are a variation. Um, so literally in our communities, you can't say, you know, everybody's like this. We're not mm-hmm. money. We're not mm-hmm. money. So you have those in the community. But, but understanding that we're not all the same and embracing the difference, but understanding that in our differences, there's, uni- there's unity. Yes, sir. That- mm-hmm. And you know, you, you, you are right. As we begin to close, we must talk about how to eliminate colorism. So while you're in the vein, um, Carlos, what do you believe is something that needs to be noted today uh, regarding how we eliminate colorism in in our own community? So I I think something we can do today, an action item we can do today is to look at ourselves in the mirror and to love ourselves in the mirror. To look at ourselves in the mirror and to love ourselves in the flesh. To understand that we are unique, mysterious, masterful. Um, And as we extend that grace and love toward ourselves in all of our variety of ways, extend that grace to someone who looks like you right look at that young black boy and don't see a criminal don't see a problem don't see um you know all the other negative connotations but see a little bit of you Uh. see a little bit of god and give them that same grace to understand that they're not a criminal um to see that young black girl in full blackness, in full blackness, see her and don't finger popping, neck rolling, don't see, uh, you know, baby mama drama, see her and see yourself, see God and, 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 and see all the wondrous creation that he has created in variety. Um, it was said on one of our, I think it was on the actual talk show that oftentimes people will say, I don't see color. Well, no, no, we, we want you to see color. We want you to see me, see me and all of me. Um, so I think seeing, what can we do today? See me, see all of me, love me for being me. Okay. I totally agree, uh, Pastor Calhoun. And uh, sir, while we're at it, go ahead and share with the people how they can reach you um, and for any bookings, a motivational speaking of any kind, sir. Um, so you can find me on those anointed Thursdays. <laughs> on on a KY radio show with Coach Dale. Take care of yourself and one another. Come on now. <laughs> All right, all right. But, but you can follow me on Facebook, Carlos Calhoun on Facebook, 
Um, I lead a congregation, but that's the Baptist Church of Plainville, Georgia. Uh, we have a Facebook page, a website, www. Bethesdaplainville.org. Um, got a book that we're working on. We share it, um, that we should have more information. Um, push prayer call every Thursday morning, 7.30, Facebook Live. We push. That means we pray until something happens. We pray hard and we praise God even harder because he's been real, real good. I know that's right. Pastor Larry, sir, I want you to answer yes, the same question that uh, Pastor Calhoun uh uh, answer. Well, I mean, he said it so eloquently. He did. I don't, he know, really I, did. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can come behind that, but um, th th there's two key things that I, I would leave with this. One, I enjoyed the fact that he said that we need to, with the Juneteenth thing, and then he said something that was very key. He said how you sat down with grandmother and them and you listened to the stories. Most of our history is oral history. So when our, if, if we don't catch a hold to it, our generation would lose centuries of oral information that was given to us because there's a battle between the young and the black. Yeah, there's a battle between yes, young and the black. And then he said something that I, I had to tell a white gentleman one time. I was working out at the gym and he was like, well, Larry, you know, I don't see color. I said, if I hit you in your face right now and the police came up here, you ain't going to tell them it was an invisible man that hit you. I say, so you see color. So don't say you don't see color. Just say, like uh, Pastor Calhoun said, you just want to learn, you know, not to use my color against you. Uh, but no, I can't come behind that. So I give you my information. Uh, Larry King Jr. on Facebook. Uh, you can reach me. I'm also uh, a pastor of Perfecting Love Ministry, where imperfect people come to serve a perfect God. I also am uh, one of the co-founders uh, of Gangs of Ministry, God always needs, the acronym God always needs the soldiers. Um, we deal with the athletic part. We deal with mind, body, and soul, and that's the athletic portion of our ministry. Freedom Friday is the physical part, of another physical part where we, well, not since COVID hit, we have to, we have to cut it off. But uh, once a Friday, <clears throat> one Friday out of a month, we allow the young people in the community and all over the city to come and, and show their talents, whether it's rapping, uh, gospel rap whether it's gospel rap, dancing, poetry, or what have you. But once again, if you want to reach me, I'm on Facebook at Larry King Jr. I'm going to leave, uh, you know, with, uh, with, with this, this statement. I, I, I believe one of the things that we need to do uh, to eliminate colorism is we first have to start by teaching uh, our youth about colorism. And that's just to piggyback out, off of Calhoun and Larry, because they both said how important it was for us to start, you know, talking to them while they're young. We all also have to, we must check ourselves. We must check ourselves and we must check others, you know, when we identify with colorism. And earlier when we first started um, the session, Pastor Calhoun recognized that a name was given to the prejudice and the pretense in our, in our community, which is colorism. So now we have a name for it. And we must identify Whenever we, we got to check ourselves and check other people, when we, when we see that thing, we got to check it. We got to also keep in mind that colorism does not only affect just dark skin. It affects light skin. It also, uh, uh, you know, when I say dark and light skin, I'm talking about men and women. And, and, and oftentimes when it comes to women, you know, light skinned women are frequently got frequently called certain names like red bone, light bright, and high yellow. And, and back in the day, it was it was known to be a compliment. You know, come here, red bone, come here, high yellow. Or, you know, it's like you weren't so offended that what somebody wasn't calling you a black something or another. But you see, when those when you put in the in that box, you know, as a light skinned woman. You're often uh, uh, alienated 
because of the perception that lighter skinned women are more beautiful. That is not the case. That is like a brainwashing thing that, that, that takes place. Like if you, if it's looked at that those type of names are a compliment, you know, that is not the case. It's a lie. So colorism is not limited to just our black community either. It's not to be, you know, it's not, it, it's not like it's acceptable, you know, it's, it's colorism exists everywhere with the different shades in the, in the, and also the different races minus the Caucasian because they have a shade. So what we have to do as a black community, first of all, is we have to attack that thing, you know, and we have to stop allowing colorism to separate us because colorism divides us. We think, depending on your color, you think you're better. I'm just keeping it real. Depending on your color, it's just like these sororities that they got. They got a dark skin group of women. They got a light skin group of women. And they literally treat each other like they're smarter than the other or prettier than the other because of the shade of their skin. Because they can wear red lipstick or pink lip, lipstick better than the other one. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but in essence, it really is like a prejudice against one another. It, it's like a, a, a dispute. So I'm gonna leave you with a quote, with a, a quote by Beyonce Knowles Carter. We have always been wonderful. I see us reflected in the world's most heavenly things. Black is king. We were beauty before they knew what beauty was. Facts all day. I wanna thank you for tuning in to I'm Not Okay Why. I'm Coach Dan. Remember to love yourself. Love everybody and be an example. Thank you for tuning in to I'm Not Okay Why.